Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to another episode of Solar Vision. Yay, we're back. Nice to see you for another week. Um, so I just realized that, sorry, I just went loud. What was that other voice? Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to another episode of Solar Vision. Yay, we're back for another week. So I was briefly like looking at the other two videos and while I was looking at the other two videos, when I say the other two videos, I mean the last two videos I posted in this year and I realized I haven't been saying affirmations. How could I have forgotten to say affirmations in the beginning of each and every video? That's crazy. Like that's what I did for what? Like 17 videos straight? How do you forget? That's why you just shouldn't take long breaks. I'm going to take my socks off because it's hot. Y'all, y'all are only getting this outfit and me being dressed like this only because I had these clothes on before because I had an interview. And yeah, don't get used to this. No, I'm playing, but I really did have an interview, but I'm playing about that. I mean, you know. I don't see the need to dress up and not really be going anywhere. So I just be wearing like kind of house clothes ish on this podcast. Anywho, let's get straight to the point because I don't want us to be here all day. I know you don't, but thank you so much for tuning in again. Please subscribe, please like, do all the things, share with your friend. Today's topic is going to be really good, but before we get to the, today's topic, let's get to our affirmations that I've been forgetting in this new year. Come on, we cannot be starting 2023 like this, and we is me. I'm talking about myself. Um, so, if you're new here, I do affirmations in, at the beginning of each and every video. I Leave a pause after each affirmation so that you can say them with me. Let's affirm together. Let's get this new year kicking on to the right start. Finally, a month in. Crazy, but whatever. It's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. Isn't that what they say? That's what they be saying. Okay. I choose to hold life's many mysteries. I welcome receiving unexpected opportunities. I am grateful for the abundance that's on the way and the abundance I currently have. I can achieve greatness. I currently have everything I need to be successful in all my endeavors. I am open to unlimited possibilities. I am prepared to share all my gifts with the world. I am open to new solutions and creativity. I can achieve whatever I set my mind to. Yes, you can. I believe in you. Those affirmations were good. I really can't believe I forgot affirmations. That is wild to me. Also, Whenever I wear like a, what's this called? Sorry, I just feel like I'm very, I'm so close to the camera and should I be closer to the camera? I don't know where I should be, but I'll just be right here for right now. Comment below if you like those affirmations. I really like them. Um, So without further ado, let's get into the topic of today. And the topic and the title, I think I'm going to title it is your negativity is not your fault. And then I'm going to explain why, obviously. But if you feel like you're the type of person who is always fighting the negatives in your head and you feel like you're at your wit's end or you get annoyed because you're always thinking about something negative, this video is for you. Okay. I have a fun fact for you on this topic. Your brain 
purposefully remembers negative things, negative experiences, and it tells you those negative things either based on those experiences or just negative in general to save you. Your brain remembers the negatives to save you. This also explains why most of the time or a lot of times people can explain or remember bad situations or more bad situations versus the good situations that they experienced. Even though there has been a lot of good in their lives, they always remember and bring up the bad situations. It's just our brain. So we can also now blame our brain. It's not really us because if you're like me, you get frustrated because you don't remember the things that you you know, would normally want to remember. I mean, I'm not saying mine is that bad, but I just feel like if it's, if I'm this way, there's either people better than me or people worse than me. So it's not your fault. Your brain saves all this negative information in a folder to protect you so that if you see signs of something similar to that negative experience, then your brain knows to tell you, get out of there. Because this means that danger is coming because this danger back then. That makes sense? So we can't be upset because our brain is literally, in our head, it's making us be negative and nasty and not good to ourselves. But at the same time, if you think about what the brain is trying to do, and every single thing that we see an issue with most of the time it's our body trying to protect us just like when you have trauma the brain in order to protect you is going to try to forget that trauma so sometimes when people try to recall their trauma or even for a certain amount of time in their journey or trying to uncover that trauma they can't remember certain parts until they like do some kind of therapy or you know after a while of digging deep or sometimes they just randomly get little flashes from something that that they don't remember, but remembered in that flash. The brain was trying to protect you. Whatever trauma you had, sometimes certain trauma, especially if it's childhood trauma, your brain and your body were not able to process it. So instead of processing it, we just forgot about it and we're going to dump it over here. Um, And maybe you can just uncover that when your brain fully develops and when it fully develops, then you may have uh instances where you can remember certain things some people don't can't recall things some people just really can't every single thing in life is on a spectrum there are people that have never had trauma block being blo- has there are people who have never had their trauma blocked out in their brain there's people who couldn't remember well there's people who didn't remember until they got older There's people who still to this day know something happened to them and they're showing the signs of something happening to them. They're showing the signs of uh, trauma happening to them or past trauma happened. What? They're showing signs that trauma has happened to them, uh, but can't recall what kind of trauma because their brain just blacked it out. And you can't say when someone's going to start remembering things. You can't say if someone is ever going to start remembering things because... That's uh, that's not real life. Things aren't really that predictable. Everybody's different. Even with the trauma blocking out your memory, <clears throat> sometimes trauma can mess with your brain so much so to the point where even memory, you have memory loss or you have a hard time remembering things, period. There are some people, okay, when I say period, I mean, just in everyday life kind of stuff. I think that when you get pregnant and you become a mother, yes, for sure, your kids for sure take some of your memory and some of your, I wouldn't say not knowledge because that doesn't stop you from like learning and retaining information. But if you don't study the things you want to remember, even everyday life experiences, I think you'll forget them if you experience trauma and if you experience trauma and had a baby. Does that make sense? So certain life events, I know that in order for me to remember them and cherish them, I have to play them back in words in my head. 
So I won't forget them because if I don't, I know I was there. I know I saw it. Someone can probably refresh my memory, but I won't remember that. And I don't know if that's because of having kids or if that's because of trauma, but I really do think trauma plus having kids probably screwed me over. But if trauma has the ability to block your brain or yeah, if trauma, it blocks your brain, but your brain kind of does it to itself. So what's happens if trauma is able to have those kind of effects i'm sure it has long-term effects because with trauma and the reason why your body the reason why your brain did what it did is because the body cannot handle that kind of stress so if you stress something out to a point where it can't handle it i'm sure there's more adverse effects i haven't looked into the research i just do my own hypothesis and if it makes sense to me I just say it makes sense. That's probably not the best thing to do, but I never said I was a doctor. So, because for a while I thought that, okay, this is pregnancy brain. Cause as soon as you get pregnant, your brain just kind of goes. But then I thought that was done after you had the kids, but no, it stays. And I mean, I won't say it gets worse, but there are some things that I just really get on my own nerves about with the way my body functions and it has nothing to do with me not trying to make it function that way. But let me know if you deal with that and if you do, then that is probably why. I'm glad we have answers because but what I was going to say earlier is that some people can't remember their childhood. Some people can't remember anything and like I said everything's on a spectrum everybody has different stresses different traumas and has gone through different stresses and traumas in their life depending on the age depending on how you know how developed your body or your brain was to be able to process it and if it wasn't I just find it astonishing when I hear things like that because that's wild to me, like not being able to remember your childhood. At least I can remember good things. and I can still obviously remember bad things. But to not remember your own childhood entirely, what do you have to base things off of? Or like, what do you have to base memories with parents and just like relationships? I feel like a lot of relationships rely on the history of the relationship and remembering the beginning parts so obviously I guess you don't history matters with parents but I feel like okay history matters history matters with how judging how someone is how they showed you you were they were in the beginning the history of that matters in how our relationship is going to be does that make sense So that must be very challenging, especially like if you have, you know, some of us still have childhood friends that we're in contact with. I barely, I mean, if you say in contact with, probably talk to once every five years. All right, cool. But some people are really close with some people from middle school or some people from high school. But if you don't have any history or you don't remember any of that, how do you, you can't form or have. I wouldn't even say good relationships, but like you don't have any relationship, any foundation to those relationships because you can't remember. Like when you fall in love with someone and you've been married 10, 12, well, let me just talk about me, nine years, you remember the beginning parts. Like all of that is history to bring you up to this person. Yes, you don't want to go about remembering all the negative things about a person but at the same time the good things remind you oh wow he was he was so sweet even then and he's still sweet to this day kind of thing like wow you've been treating me good this long so anywho that's crazy I really am interested in hearing people's stories like that and then also on the other end There's people who remember, like I said, they remember every single detail of what happened and can tell you the story in a way that is just, I mean, the trauma isn't, but 
the way they tell the story is like they were born to be a storyteller and they can tell it in a way that I couldn't tell my traumas. My trauma is just like all over the place. I couldn't tell it unless I probably rehearsed it, rehearsed telling it, which that's not a thing. But it's just crazy to me how different each person's story is. It's amazing the different ways that the stories are portrayed or the stories are told. Okay. I am fascinated by the brain. I want to take a quick second to shout the brain out because... Yes, we all hate, especially on our healing journey, we all hate having to go through and fighting the negative that's within us. But I feel like maybe if you acknowledge the negative, just like if when you're trying to be positive and uh, the best way to go about that is not to disown your negative thoughts, but it is to own them, feel them, and then change the story. I feel like we'll have much more grace with ourselves if we realize that our brains are doing this to us. Our brains are making us negative. Our brains are forcing us to remind us about negative things for our own good. And once we realize that, then I feel like that's another set of chains released from our life or our mental capacity I don't know I don't got the words but I think that is so fascinating that our brain can protect us but at the same time our brain can be our downfalls at the same time so it's just like are you yeah how do you feel about the brain? It does good, but also not good. But also, at the same time, the brain is working with what it got. Because the brain isn't the one that put you in these traumatic situations. External forces put you in this traumatic situation. So the brain is doing the best it can to protect us. But the people that are external that are supposed to protect us don't and or haven't. So the brain has to do all the work. So I'm going to say I appreciate the brain for doing what it do because though sometimes we might not listen <laughs> to our brain, but if you think of it as a friend that sees red flags in people and they're like, hey, no, 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 you don't need to go down this road. That's also your gut feeling. I'm sure that connects to the brain. Um. And you go against your gut anyway, and you do it, and you realize, oh, that wasn't a good idea. Whole time your brain is like, now, sis, I already knew. I saw the signs from the last thing we was in, but you didn't want to listen to me. So now here we go again. Now you're forcing your brain to do so much more work because now you didn't added some more pieces of damage and brokenness and trauma to it that it didn't ask for because it tried to save you. So I'm on the brain side. Okay. And while we on it, I feel like that's all the brain stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk about trusting your gut. I think that I am in the season of really testing out my gut. Have you ever had a time where you wanted to trust your gut or in a situation where it's like you're supposed to trust your gut? And most of the time you do trust your gut, but then... If you have a brain like mine, you second guess your gut for reasons that, of course, I don't even know if I'm going to blame childhood. I don't know if I'm going to blame generational things, but I'm going to say for me, this has to do a little something with childhood in, I'm sorry, I'm not in the season of trusting my gut. I am the season, I'm in the season of building self-trust. So keeping up the promises I make for myself, it's easy for me to negate or like say if I have a schedule, it's easy for me to get out of that schedule because of some reasons those excuses are valid and other reasons is because of me, procrastination or I'll do it later, that's procrastination. Anywho, 
trusting myself and keeping promises to myself. Okay, that's what it is. I am in a season of trusting myself and keeping promises with myself because keeping promises with myself is what's going to make me trust myself more. Not saying that I don't really follow my gut. It's just I'm going to overthink it to the point where I'm now questioning my gut because I don't trust myself like that. And this has been something that's just, you know, been going on for years. And there there are decisions uh, that, of course, I went with my gut and it was right. But at the same time, I'm also breaking out of the thought of making the complete right decision. So the reason why I question my gut is because I want to make the perfect, I mean, the perfect choice. And there's no such thing as a perfect choice. No matter what kind of choice you make, there's always going to be pros. There's always, there's always going to be cons. Um, But you just go with your gut and what's best for you at the time. But for me, I just feel like I don't want to ever have to make this decision again. So I'm going to do all the research that I need to do versus listening to my gut. Because sometimes your gut outweighs the research. So, yeah. Been going with my gut a lot lately. But as far as strengthening my trust within and uh, whatever the other thing I said earlier, that's what I'm doing. I don't even know what we're on right now, but let me double check to make sure. Yeah, I just really want to talk about the brain and tell you that your negativity is not your fault. That is pretty much it. Some people are negative and nasty, and the nastiness is your fault, for sure. But the negative part, especially if you didn't been through a lot, not your fault. It's our brain. But just because you have a negative brain does not make you... Wait, just because you have a negative brain does not give you the excuse to be nasty to people because nobody deserves to be treated that way. That's the difference. You could be negative, but you should not make somebody feel a way because you were negative. You should not put your negativity on somebody else. What, is, what does Tabitha Brown say? She said something like, have a good day, but even if you can't, don't go messing up nobody else's. And that's what negative people like to do. Don't bring company to your misery. Be miserable by be miserable by yourself. Okay? All right. Yes, it's our brain's fault, but at some point we got to do some work to fight our brain. We got to reprogram the brain. So don't use this as an, as an excuse like, see, this is why I'm negative. It's my brain and be blaming your brain and then use the brain as a crush to not be better. Don't do that. I'm just telling you what the brain does. Not giving this is not an excuse, not giving you an excuse to be negative and nasty. Okay, this should be encouragement. This should make you feel like this is not your fault. And it should help you in your fight towards healing and towards wanting to be a better person. You know, all the little resolutions that you made for yourself. That's what this should do. Please don't use this as an excuse because when I like that. Okay, so checking the time. Really quick, give me a second. Hey, let's see how much time there is. 12 minutes. What's 38 minus 12? We're at 20 something minutes already. But I, right before I started filming this, I was listening to a documentary on Netflix. It's called Killer Sally. And it's crazy. I haven't gotten to the end, but I'm going to do my prediction. If you watch Killer Sally, then just cut off the video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Come back next week. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things. But Killer Sally is about two bodybuilders. They get married, blah, blah, blah. What I see happening, and I'm not going to go through the whole entire story because if you want to listen to it, then listen to it. But... What I see happening is the wife began, began, I need a nap. 
I need to do these early in the morning while my brain is fresh because this is not it. But they're a bodybuilder couple. couple. They are a bodybuilding couple. Or they is it bodybuilder couple? Bodybuilding. Also, excuse my voice. We were sick. And I got some <clears throat> mucus in here. And that's not cute. Anywho, what I predict, the reason why she killed her husband is because she beca- began to resent him. Because they both bodybuild. But... Um, he started to feel like he's a star, so he should be the one. So, okay, sorry. They were struggling, struggling to pay bills. They got two kids, whatever. He felt like since he's a star, he's a bigger bodybuilder. And obviously he's a man he, and whatever. He felt, feels like the protein, the, the steroids, all that should go to him and not his wife, even though she is also a bodybuilder. So she began to resent him for those things. And then also he started hitting on her and that's all I saw so far. So I feel like she just got tired of getting beat on, feeling less than because while He's feeling all these things. She's the one that's working. She's the one that's taking her kids to Mexico to pick up the steroids. She's the, she's the breadwinner, but he's like making her feel less than. So, not saying I understand it. I mean, not saying I condone it, but I see where it's going, you know. So, if you're in the documentaries, drop some below because I've been, I mean, I haven't been like a diehard documentary fan, but the stuff that I'm into is documentary based, but not documentaries, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, But I guess what I'm saying is I don't watch like commercial documentaries, documentaries on YouTube and, you know, hearing people's stories in their lives. That's something I've always been into, but not like well-produced documentaries so if you have some suggestions let me know down below um i think that is it Uh, yeah i think that is it i'm not gonna hold y'all any longer sorry for hitting the mic again i hope that you guys have a great morning afternoon evening day um i hope that you know you just receive all the abundance that you can possibly receive all the happiness, all the peace, all the blessings, all the joy, all of that, all of that. Please come back next week. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Follow Soul Vision on Instagram at Soul Vision. I just post little clippy clips from here. So if you want to share your friends, share it to your friends. Just do that for me, please. I read it. Um. So, yeah, without further ado, if that is all you guys want from me, (laughs) have a good one. Bye.